let's talk about taxes. All my notes are in my drive, Google Drive. What's up everybody, my name is Jason from EO7 Media and today I'm gonna to talk to you a little about what I know about tax deductions. Now, I own a video production business and with that comes a lot of responsibilities in the business side of business. I wish I could say that I knew everything there is to know about tax deductions and business in general, but what really happens as business owners is we tend to learn as we go. And the best thing that I can do is when I figure something out, I love to help others because sometimes trying to figure those things out can be a little complicated. And let's face it, there is nothing more complicated than your taxes. It's true. What can you deduct? What can't you deduct? What shouldn't you deduct? What should you deduct, but you probably aren't? Now, one of the most popular business deductions, as you probably already know, are meals. Now, in 2021 and here in 2022, I got some great news for you. As a business owner, you are allowed to take off 100% of your meals for your tax deductions. That means anything you spent in a business meeting or talking to clients or talking to coworkers or getting food for the office for your employees, that is 100% deductible. However, starting in 2023 and for the foreseeable future, we are looking at two different deduction types that you can do for your business meal deductions. Number one, the 100% deduction and the 50% deduction, not including the 0% deduction, including entertaining. If you are taking your clients out for a golf trip or a concert or a nightclub or just taking the clients out or business partners out for a night on the town to have fun, this is considered a zero deduction ability. Now, sadly, all those golf trips that you had with those awesome clients of yours and the nights on the town together are now done for the foreseeable future as a tax deduction. Of course, you can still do it, but it is on your dime. Now, before we get into this, make sure you stick around to the very end where I'm gonna explain exactly what to write for every meal expense. It's gonna make your life so much easier. Now, I wanna go into this letting you know that I am not a CPA. I am not a tax professional. I am a video production business owner. This is just the information that I have sussed out over the last couple days while I've been trying to do my own taxes. I realized for my 2022 taxes, I don't have to worry about this. Excellent. However, moving forward, I need to change my spreadsheets around, meaning I need to know exactly what meals I can put in the 100% camp and what meals I can put in the 50% camp. Here's the information that I found. The following types of expenses are 50% deductible. Meals provided for the convenience of the employer, such as meals for the occasional employee overtime. Basically, let's say your crew is staying late to finish up a job, but they're not really being overly compensated for that time. Whether their salary or they're just not getting better overtime pay, you can provide a meal for everyone and write that off at 50%. Water, coffee, snacks, provided at the office. Do you have these things in your office, including water, snacks, coffee? I know I do. When my crew comes over and we shoot coffee and cameras, we have coffee. We have lots of snacks. Unfortunately, moving forward, these in-office snacks are now 50%. Meals included in charitable events. Now this one's a little confusing to me, and if you're an accountant or a CPA out there, I would love to hear from you on this, because this sounds really similar to providing meals to the public, which is a 100% de deductible discount, which we'll get to in a second. Meals in the office during meetings of employees, stockholders, agents, or directors. Now I see how this one can be confusing because your employees are on the clock. They are being paid to be there, and if you're paying them while they're working, I would think that this would be 100% deductible. Unfortunately, not in the eyes of the IRS. So keep that in mind the next time you buy everyone pizza at your work. Meals during business travel. Now this one's kind of surprising to me because when I have to travel for business, I'm away from home. I'm away from my creature comforts. But remember, when you're traveling for business, all your expenses can be billed back to the client. If you're traveling for business, i.e. you're shooting outside of the state, all your meals, all your travel expenses, all your room and board should be covered by your client. So when you go out and buy your own meal, you are only getting a 50% deductible rate 
on that expense. Meals at a seminar or conference. And whether it's a seminar in your hometown or you're traveling for work again, seminars and conventions, everything you are spending meal-wise or drink-wise is 50%. Client business meals, if the taxpayer is present and the meal is not lavish or extravagant. And here's the big one client meals. In the past, we've been able to take our clients out for a great meal, discuss our business avenues with them, and be able to write off that expense. Unfortunately, that is no longer the case. When you take a client out or even your employees out, now your deductible is at 50%, which to be honest, kind of blows. But unfortunately, as business owners, we are at the whim of the government. Now, before I jump into the 100%, let's look at the last key little bit of information here where the IRS classifies lavish or extravagant. They do not expressly detail what lavish and extravagant means. So what does it mean? When it comes down to it, if you go out to have a business meal and spend $300 on a steak, that would probably be considered lavish. But I would love to talk to an accountant out there because what if your business normally spent that much on a meal? What if that was your average and you were bringing in clients that were spending 10, 20, 30 million per project? A $300 steak doesn't seem that much. So I think it all comes down to your business, what you're providing, and the level of income that you are getting from those services. Please do not hold me to that, but if I had to make a snap judgment and without the IRS telling me what is and what is not a lavish or extravagant meal, that's the avenue I would take. Now, let's jump into my favorite, a 100% deductible. The following types of expenses are 100% deductible. Meals included as taxable compensation to the employee or independent contractor. All right, so this one's a little confusing. And the way I understand it is if the employee is being compensated the meal, meaning you need to put that number, that price of the meal into their W-2, then you can write it off for 100%. But that also means the employee is going to pay more taxes on it. Oh, no! Do you put that burden on your employee by saying you paid them more than you actually did because you are giving them the price value of the meal you provided? Or do you just eat that cost and do a 50% deductible? It depends on you and your business. Me, I will never put that burden on one of my freelancers or one of my employees. If I'm paying them with food, that's my business. I will not put that tax burden on them. Meals sold to a client or a customer. So if somewhere in your business or services you are selling the food to a customer or a client, then you can write that off 100%. Now, me, I'm a videographer. My business has nothing to do with food and I'm not going to sell food to a client because it's not in my realm. But if you run a catering business or a cake company, you can write off that meal to a client that you are selling to the client at 100%. Food offered to the public for free, that one I guess is pretty cut and dry. If you offer food to the public for free, you can write it off for 100%. Let's move on. Office parties where the majority of the employees are present. In order for this to be deductible at 100%, the majority of your employee staff has to be there in attendance. And majority, as you might know, is 51%. If you have 100 people working in your business, 99 employees and you, and 50 people show up, unfortunately, that is not the majority. So make sure those memos go out and people do come to your party to make sure that you can write all of that off. Team building events. A team building exercise I've done many times with my crew where we go out and we practice something in camera, in business, in branding, in thought exercises, how we build each other up and how we can work better together. In this kind of scenario, it would be written off at 100%, and that's good to know. So how can you make a meal a team building exercise? 
when you are doing your books, when you are keeping track of all your meals from the year, make sure that you put two separate categories, which meals can be deducted at 100% and which meals can be deducted at 50%. It is going to drastically save your angst and anxiety at the end of the year when you're trying to remember back eight months. Can that taco meal be 100% deductible or sadly, does it have to fall under the 50% deductible? Now, let's jump into my final tip and I think one that is really going to help you out. Now, every meal that you want to deduct as a business expense has to have five elements. These elements include, number one, the meal itself, the restaurant you were at, the provider of the meal, where you bought the meal from. Number two, the time and date that you were at this location or you bought this food and you got your receipt. Number three, the amount paid, the full amount that you paid for the goods and services of the meal. This also includes tip. Number four, your business contact. Now that's a very important wording. Business contact means anyone that you are dealing business with, i.e. a client, a future client, uh, someone you are talking about business with, someone you are dealing with business, or an employee or a coworker. Number five, what you discussed. This is just as important as the price itself, because if you can't justify what you did over the meal, this receipt, this business expense might be void. Now on every receipt you receive moving forward as a business expense for a meal, here's what I suggest doing. Circle the name of the location that you bought this from. Circle the date and the time, if possible, on the receipt. If you cannot find the date or the time on the receipt, make sure you write it on the receipt somewhere near the name of the business. Circle the total amount that you spent on the receipt. On the back of the receipt or in a more clear area, write down who you had the meeting with. Write down their names and the business name that they work for or work under. And then lastly, write a quick little summary about what you discussed. If you have all of this on your receipt, come tax season and beyond, if knock on wood, the IRS does come a knocking, then you have all your ducks in a row. Now, something I've mentioned time and time again in the past, especially on coffee and cameras, if you watch our podcast talk show, one of the best things I can suggest you do as a business owner is get a CPA. If the IRS does want to come after you for an audit, they legally have to talk to your CPA before they come to you. So your CPA will be dealing with them a lot more than you will. And in my mind, at least, that's a huge headache reliever that I have someone in my corner helping me with all the numbers that I know are correct. Thank you so much for joining me. If you like this content and you like what we're doing here, feel free to follow along because we have a lot more in the pipeline, including a lot more episodes of Coffee and Cameras coming your way, where Hilda, my business partner and I, sit down once a week and we talk about things that deal with our business, including photography, videography, digital marketing, and so much more. Sometimes including just running a business. And lastly, but not least, be better and do something amazing today.